so much for uh, giving us a little bit of your time on Christmas Eve. And uh, we are definitely going all in. Anybody else? How many of you are going all in this Christmas? Did you just hear yourselves? <laughs> I'm going to tell your kids on you. <laughs> that was pitiful. How many of you guys are going all in for Christmas? All right, all right. Oh. Okay, well, okay, that was good. Oh, man, I tell you, um, there is definitely a big difference between going all in and not going all in. I don't know, uh, we did a staff party, and we were way up, um, up in the avenues, and we went up by 18th Avenue. Has anybody been up on 18th Avenue? Have you, have you seen this house? You guys, if you have kids, just last night we took our kids up to this house. Go up there. You, you'll be able to find it because I, it's kind of like this light. Probably if we looked out tonight, you'll just see this light shining up. You drive by this house, because do any of you put Christmas lights on your home? Anybody in here put it? Just a few of you. Uh, this home has literally, Susie and I counted them, over 30 big Santa Clauses that glow in the dark, you know, and then they have over 30 snowmen that grow in the dark, and then they have lights, and so, I mean, their whole side of this hill is absolutely ridiculous. Clark Glisrald has nothing on him whatsoever. In fact, we stopped by his house, and he met us in the car with a big thing of, of candy canes. He's passing them out to people as they look at his house. I mean, it's awesome. I live over here in Sugar House, uh, right by Christmas Street. You guys ever go by Christmas Street? You know, it's very cool. Uh, and then right across the street from there, the, uh, the neighborhood just north of us, they put all the little Christmas story for you. You go around the street. And then there's my street, okay? And but nobody goes down our street because there's nothing really there. Um, man, going all in and not going all in. It's a really completely different experience. Our life is completely different on whether we decide to go all in or not. I learned this lesson uh, really, really early when I was playing uh, freshman basketball. And uh, so we were having a game, and the game was going okay. It was a tight game. We were down by, you know, about seven or eight points. And, um, and we're in this high school gymnasium, you guys. You know, and you were in a high school gymnasium, and you can hear, like, everything. Like, you know, there, there's a few. It's a freshman game, right? There's hardly anybody in the stands except parents. And we, with this one guy, uh, he was a dad of my a friend, and he would always go, here we go, here we go, here we go. And you could always hear him, and it would be like, yeah, that's awesome. And so that was my friend's dad. Well, I'm out there playing, and we're down by about eight points. I'm playing defense, and the, uh, there's a foul, and the ref blows this whistle. And all of a sudden, my dad stands up, and he goes, If you're not going to hustle, set your butt on the bench. <laughs> and, um, yes, everyone could hear it. And my coach took me out right at that moment. And I came down, and I sat, and he was right across me, and I sat like this, and I put my hand like this, and I just stared at him. And he went just like this. And he stared right back at me. And we just eyeballed. I was so humiliated. And then, not too much long, about two minutes later, the coach called my name, called me back in the game, and I flew in. And I went in there, man, and I went hog wild. And I went in. I stole the ball like three times, got five rebounds, scored ten points, and we won the game. Right there. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, freshman basketball. It's awesome. <laughs> no, but here's, here's, what, here's what I realize, you guys. You can be in the game. You can totally be in the game. And you cannot be all in. You know what I'm saying? And you can go all in and everything changes. And what I want to talk to you about today for this Christmas, our whole theme is this. It's about being all in. And the greatest gift that you can give is to be all in. The benefit that everybody else receives when you go all in is completely different. My team benefited from me not going out there and playing just half-heartedly, but going for it. You ever been in a restaurant where you feel like they don't even really want you there? You know what I'm talking like? You walk in and the people, and there's no one there, and then they finally get there and you sit down and there's no water, and the people just seem like, I just sometimes want to go, oh, I'm so sorry for being here. I didn't mean to bother you, you know? And then you go into another restaurant. You take your wife out if it's, a, if it's a great meal, and they just meet you and they greet you and they take care of you and they're kind, and the experience is completely different. You know, I, I coached my little boy Caleb's uh, soccer team this last year. He was five. Anybody ever coach a five-year-old soccer team before? I was out there the whole time, literally the whole game, all I did was yell kids' names. That was it. I just yelled their names because I couldn't get them to do anything. There was no interest. They were in the game, but, you know, the girls are holding hands and they're skipping around. You know, Caleb's tackling the other boys, and I'm just like, oh, my gosh. And then you go to a professional game, and you watch these guys who have given their life to something. It's completely different. Let's take it a little more serious. When you get to, I, I, I really do, I was thinking about this whole idea of people who've decided, I'm going all in. And people in the medical profession, 
Our, our people who, I just, you know, we have a lot of people who come to K2 eventually because they're up at the U and they're going to do their residency, you know? That's just insane. You guys who are in the medical profession, I know you gave up your life. There was a moment in time where you said, you know what? I'm all in. And then you sacrificed your life, and then we all benefit. You guys ever think about the medical community today? You know, right here in our own midst, little Emma Watson is a sweet little girl who, I mean, she was on her deathbed so many times. And yet because of people who had committed their lives to be the best that they could be, and they went all in, she's still alive today. I, I remember I've had that experience. As, as a guy who speaks a few years ago, I started speaking like this. And I, every day I get up here and speak at, Kenzie, at K2, and I, I just was losing my voice. And so finally I went in to see an ear, nose, throat specialist, right? And the guy comes in, and, and again, it was the same type of thing. He's kind of like, hey, how's it going? You're looking at him. You know, he just kind of, I, I, I really thought I was bothering him because I was there. And then he stuck this thing up my nose, right, because he wanted to see what was going on. And he kept going in, and I'm just gagging. <laughs> I mean, I'm about ready to throw up on him right there. And he's like, man, you're so tight. And he's jamming this thing down my nose to get in to take pictures. Yeah, I mean, we got done, and he's like, yeah, well, you know, I can't really see. We'll have to figure out. I think it's, uh, I just said, you know, I need somebody else. And I went to somebody else, a different specialist, and we walked in, and the experience was so completely different. He had totally committed himself to all this equipment, to his knowledge. All that, by when, with him, he put, I can't remember exactly now how it worked, but he put this camera in, and he found it. I'm actually looking at my throat, and he says, there it is right there. And he totally took care of me. Man, when I looked at those two doctors, there was no question who I was going with. Because I want to go with somebody who's all in. And the benefit we have. Now, you guys, just think about your relationships. You ever been in a relationship where the other person wasn't all in? Man, I tell you, there's nothing worse. You know, as a guy who does premarital counseling, you know, with people who are getting married. Can you imagine doing premarital counseling with a guy and all of a sudden the, one, of the, one of the two people getting married was just kind of him hon? You know, yeah, well, I'm not sure. And I've, I've sensed it before where you can tell that one person's all in and the other one's not. I, I tell you, it's almost better just to say, don't even go down this road unless you're going to be all in. You guys, the greatest gift that you can give to this world, the pleasure that artists and musicians, these guys who rehearsed and rehearsed and used their gift for you, then we get to receive that pleasure. The medical community, we get to receive our health. People who love us, we get relationship. It's the greatest gift that you can give. So, let's bring it to Christmas. The greatest gift is to give everything, is to be all in. Well, how about God? Is God in? Is he all in? You know? Because so, so there, there's actually a theory out there where some people will say that God actually created the world, that there is a God, and he created the world. So he got it started, yeah, whether it was the Big Bang Theory or whatever, but he got it started, and then he just, okay, now go for it. <laughs> and then he sits back, I don't know what he's doing, if he's sitting back having a cup of coffee or whatever, just kind of watching. Man, what Christmas is, you guys, Christmas is God saying, no, man, I am all in. I am all in. I'm committing everything I've got for you, okay? Let me read you a couple verses that give us a taste of Christmas. The first one is in Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. And this is a story where the shepherds are out in the field, and he, they're going to announce the birth of Christ. It says there were shepherds living out in the field nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today, in the town of David... A Savior has been born to you, and he is Christ the Lord. Matthew chapter 1, verses 20 through 21, says this. This is when uh, the angel was going to tell Joseph, it's like, listen, I know that you just found out that your wife is pregnant, and I know you've had no sexual relations with her, so let me just tell you what's going on. And he says this. After that, he considered this. An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, and he said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. Because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. And she will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. You guys, one thing that's really important to understand about Christmas is that when he was announced, when the angels came and they said, we want to tell you, the Messiah is being born, he was introduced as a Savior. 
A Savior is born. Joseph, you got to name him Jesus because he's going to save his people from their sins. Now, you talk about being all in. <laughs> How many of you know of anybody who'd want to rescue somebody who's not all in? Can you imagine that? <laughs> somebody who's, you, you guys ever watched The Deadliest Catch? Anybody ever see that, that show? How many of you have ever seen The Deadliest Catch? Okay, I mean, that is an insane movie, insane uh, television show, and it's reality. I mean, there was a guy here at K2 when I first met him, and I was just getting to know him. He said, uh, he goes, hey, I won't always be around here, you know, it, uh, and I said, well, why not? And he goes, well, have you ever seen the, the show Deadliest Catch? And I'm like, yeah, and he goes, well, that's what I do. And he's like, and it's real. That's exactly what it's like. And you know that they have to be rescued. Can you imagine the Coast Guard? A guy falls in, he's in these frigid waters, he's going to die, and the Coast Guard comes in on the helicopter, and the guy goes down, and he's like, man, it looks really cold down there. You know, yeah, can somebody test the water and see if, oh, no way, there's no way, it's too cold, I'm not going in. There's no way, man. The Coast Guard comes, and they're all in. There was a guy after the first service, and he said, hey, do you know why they're all in? He goes, because they have a creed that gets pounded into their head over and over again, so much so that when someone needs to be saved, here's their creed, you guys, it's this. It says, um, I'm sorry, where is my creed? I had to add it in. Oh, here it is, sorry, it was in really small. <laughs> their, their creed was this, it says, so others may live. I never knew that. Do you guys know that? The creed of the Coast Guard is so others may live. See, that's when, when in John 15, 13, the greatest gift that you can give is when you give everything, when you go all in. John 15, 13 puts it this way, greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. Greater love has no one than this, that he would lay down his life for his friends. My dad and his wife were here a couple months ago, and we were hanging out and just had a great time together. And uh, they said, hey, you know what? Um, we would love to actually buy you tickets and fly you down to Orlando. And just come down there and just hang out with us. And so, man, we, they live in Michigan. We don't get to see each other very often. So, like, man, we're in. And my kids, you know, they're five, seven, and nine. So, like, Disney World, SeaWorld, it's the, it's the greatest thing. So we're hanging out at SeaWorld. It was awesome, probably about halfway through the day. And then uh, all of a sudden, uh, Susie, uh, Ashlyn had to go to the bathroom. And uh, so Susie's like, hey, I'm going to take Ashton to the bathroom. I'm like, that's cool. And I was with my dad and Pat and, and Caleb and, and Mariah. And Caleb said, hey, I got to go too. And I'm like, all right, just go. And so they left. And then we went and uh, went over to see the seals, you know. And we're watching them, rawr, 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 you know, and feeding them fish and just having a blast. And about 10 minutes goes by. And Susie comes up, you know, with Ashlyn. And we're hanging out. And we're like, oh, this is so cool. And I look and I go, so where's Caleb? And she's like, I don't know. He's with you. And I'm like, no, he's not. He's with you. And she's like, no, he's not. Have you guys ever been there? We looked at each other, and immediately through my mind, I'm like, it has been like 10, 15 minutes. I'm telling you, immediate. You guys feel the terror? All of a sudden, it's like, wham, and we just booked. I mean, we ran, we grabbed Ashlyn and Mariah, and we just went flying immediately right back to where we were. And Susie's looking all over the place, and finally, she didn't know what to do, and she just put her head down, and she just started weeping, and, uh, and a woman came by, and she goes, are you looking for a little boy? And she's like, yes, and I, I still have this printed in my mind. I turned like this, and I looked over here, and there was a, a, a worker at SeaWorld with Caleb following him right behind him. And I'm telling you, man, you just, you just sink and you fall to the ground. How many of you have ever lost a kid? You know that feeling, man. It is, it is the absolute worst feeling. And you know in that moment, because you love him so much, you take off and you do anything you would do anything to go find him because he was lost. Okay, guys, Christmas. Luke 19.10 says this. The Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. Jesus came, Christmas, everything we're going to do tomorrow, all your plans for tonight, all the celebrations, all the music started because God was looking at the world that he loved, which meant you. And he was saying, Jesus, you need to go because we need to seek and save that which is lost. And when you lost your child, you can tell the intensity. In fact, when it was all over, I did. I just thought, I, I sat there and I just thought, God, I mean, do you really love us like that? Do you really love me like that? that you would come after me because I'm lost. 
Now, you guys, I want to tell you, he does. He, every one of you here, our message to you today is this. He, he, he loves you. And your life matters. Your life matters to God. Now, here's the deal. It's not like God can't find you. He's like, man, where are those? Where are they? Dude, they're in church. They're in K2. I finally found you. You know, I mean, God isn't up there wondering where you are. That's not what's lost, obviously. But what has been lost is our relationship with him. And some of you guys have had that, right? Where it wasn't that you couldn't find the person, but you lost the relationship, and it broke. See, that's what God is saying. That's not okay with me. That's not okay with me. I want to bring you back. I want to come. You were created, and you were made to be in relationship with me, and right now, we're not. Now, let me just bring this back, because remember what he said, what the angel said. He's come to save you from your sins. There's a Savior that's been born. Well, what's he save us from? See, because so many of us, you're sitting out there, and you're going, dude, I'm, I'm doing fine, actually. <laughs> you know, I, I love this holiday season, but I don't really get it. But, but see, what he's saying is what he's saving us from is our sin. And what sin is, is simply us pursuing life without God. Turning our back on God. And just saying, you know what, God, I can do this without you. I don't need you. And what happens, you guys, is we were not made for that. And so he is saying, I want to bring you back because it is what you were created for. He is everything that we need. God is your hope. He's your strength. He's your love. He's your peace. He's your purpose. In fact, you guys, I don't know if you know this, but we're all going to die one day. <laughs> And he's the only one who's actually eternal. See, our life ends, but his doesn't. And so he says, I've come to give you eternal life because you're supposed to be like living with me beyond this world into the next one. And I need to give you that life. You got to come back. And so I'm coming after you. I'm coming after you. Now, I know what it's like to go after my son. I would, I would do anything for Caleb or Mariah or Ashlyn or Susie because I love them. And if that's the greatest gift is to go all in and the greatest love is to lay down your life for a friend, then how much greater would it be if you laid down for your life for your enemy? How much greater would it be to lay down your life for somebody who doesn't even like you? <laughs> to lay down your life for someone who doesn't even care about you? See, God said, hey, I'm gonna, let me demonstrate my love for you in this. Look at this, Romans chapter 5, verse 8. It says, God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we've been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? So you guys, I don't, I don't know a lot of you here. Many of you are our guests, and, and some of you guys have been coming to K2 for a little while. Just here's what we feel like we wanted to share with you today. I feel like if God could stand up, Jesus could get up here and say, hey, can I tell you what Christmas was all about? Christmas was all about this. I am all in. Seriously, you know, we did this whole, that's why we did the poker thing, because our theme, we knew we wanted to go all in. It's like Jesus looks here, and he said, he just took all the chips, and he just pushed them in. He said, and I am all in. Now, here's what's cool. Is he didn't say, I'm all in because you're so awesome. Man, the way you love me is incredible, so I'll love you too. <laughs> you know what Jesus said? He goes, it doesn't matter. While you were still a sinner, while you didn't care about me, while you were doing things that I didn't want you to do, that's when I died for you. Can you hear me? Let me demonstrate my love for you. I love you no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter what you think. See, so guys, that is what's amazing to me about Christmas. And so what God is saying on this day to you, he's going, see, the greatest gift that you get is when you go, I'm all in. And today, God is saying, I want to go all in to you. Into you. The greatest gift, you guys, is God coming in to your life so that you're not alone anymore. Every moment of every day with God's presence right here. Colossians 1.27 put it this way. 
the hope of glory, the hope of living a full life is Christ in you. Now, if the greatest gift is God's presence within us, and he pushes all of his chips in, and he goes, okay, you guys, so here's Christmas. I'm going all in for you. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever played play, play poker or not or, or done this whole deal with the chips and stuff, but it's wild because if you're playing the game, right, and then all of a sudden somebody around the table goes, I'm all in, and they push the chips in, what do you, what do you, what do you, have, what do you have to do? Right? You've got two options, right? You just have two options. Either you fold or you go all in too. Either you fold or you go all in. And on Christmas and every, t- every week that we're here at K2, what we try to remember is God is saying to you, I want in. I want in. I want into your life. You were created to be with me, and I want in. And then what's crazy is when you sense God pushing his chips towards you, and then he sits back, and now it's your turn. When it's your turn, that's a freaky time. Because what you're really deciding is, no, God, I'm going to fold. I'm not going in. Or you decide to put him in. And why do we hesitate? You know, and, and some of us, if you're, if you're not a Christian here today, and maybe you're just checking this out, and you've never had this experience, but sometimes if you've ever felt like God has really been saying to you, come on, come on, go all in with me. And even once you're a Christian, he, he never stops, does he? You guys who follow Jesus, don't you know that? He keeps saying, now come on, push them all in again. And every time we hesitate, you know why we hesitate? Because it's a gamble. It's a risk to go all in with God. Here's the definition of a gamble. It means an enterprise undertaken or attempted with a risk of loss and a chance of profit. See, when you got these chips, you guys, and you're trying to decide, and it's like, man, every one of these is worth something to you. Every one of these, whether it's a dollar chip or five or a ten or a hundred, I don't know what you, you know, every one of these means something to you. And God is saying, okay, now I want you to give these to me. I want you to go all in with me. See, why we hesitate is we go, oh, Okay, but a man, if I go all in with God, that's a huge risk. Because I could lose something here, right? And you could. You know, there's a few things that we could lose. And we, and we know what that's like. You could lose your respect. Some of you go, man, if I actually followed Christ, oh my gosh, the guys at my workplace would think I'm nuts. Some of you think if you, gave, if you pushed all your chips into God, you'd lose your freedom. Wouldn't you? All of a sudden, you wouldn't be free to do what you want to do. And that's another one right there. It's like, man, if I go all in with God, there's some things I really like that I don't think he likes. And I don't know if I want to lose that right now. Or sometimes we think, you know, I, I, I might lose control. And I think that's the biggest one right there. If I go all in with God, I might lose control. And part of the risk of a gamble is, yeah, you know what? You could lose. You could lose. But can you imagine pushing all your chips in? And winning? See, because when you gamble, there's also the possibility that you can get it all back and way, way more. And you guys, if you say yes to God, the profit or gain is what you get with God is now you find the purpose. What he's saying is if once you give me your life, you will find the purpose for why you're here. You will get my constant presence, my fruit, which is love and joy and peace, and patience, and kindness, and goodness, and self-control will start to fill your life. I'll actually start to make your heart like mine, where you now will live like me, where you too will live like the greatest thing, where you will give your life away for others. And then Jesus came along, and he said this crazy thing. He said, you know what? If you try to save your life, he goes, you're actually going to lose it. But if you lose it for me, you're actually going to find it. See, so we sit here with our chips, and we go, man, this is my life, and this is what I've got. And God goes, okay, guys, Christmas, I'm all in. I want into your life. And we sit here with our life, and we go, okay, um, man, God, I am just not so sure. And, you know, so what we do kind of is some of us will go, there you go, God. How's that? You know, and we, and we like that. We like to test it out and just see if it's okay. But see, but if he went all in, that doesn't work. You can't, if somebody goes all in, you can't go, oh, I'll just give you part of that. He's like, no, that's not how it works. I, I want the whole thing. You've got to give this to me. And here's what's crazy is from a human perspective, from a human perspective, we feel like this is a huge, 
huge risk, don't we? To give God your life. And from God's perspective, it is the most sure thing in the world. When he went all in, you guys, it wasn't God sitting up there, you know, like, oh my gosh, if I come down and send Jesus down there, I hope this works. I just don't know if this is going to happen. No, I mean, God was sitting up there, and you know, the hand was, he's like, dude, I got a royal flush right here. I know. God knew when he came into the world. Jesus said after he died on the cross, he says, it is finished. It is a done deal. And I want to tell you guys right now, it is the most assuring most solidifying, most securing, most life-giving thing in the world to have God in you. It's what you were created for. Now, I know for us, it freaks us out to do that, but for God, it is, it's not that big of a deal. It is absolutely certain. But you know what? You'll never find that out. And, and when you play this game, you sit there, you know, and, and because what you're really doing, right, when you have this chips, is you're sitting there and you're going, oh my gosh, and you're hoping that the other guy doesn't have a better hand than you. You're just hoping. Or, because we, we experience this all the time, you guys. You guys remember when you proposed to your, with your uh, spouse? And you sat there and you were just sitting up there and you're going to lay yourself out. You're going all in and you go, honey, will you marry me? And you're just sitting there waiting, right? Because it's the scariest thing, man. I do weddings all the time. I see it on wedding days too, man. Guys are sweats dripping down the side of their face. I mean, this is it. I'm going all in. And you're hoping that the other guy or the other girl is doing the same thing. Lad and Crystal Chapman are a South Campus pastor. They just bought their first home. You guys remember that? Sign and they had to, uh, Yeah, I mean, you're just going all in. You're laying all this money out there. You're sitting behind a pile of chips. And you just don't know if you want to do it or not. I don't know if I've helped you to, to get to that emotion. If you can actually sit with it for a minute, like I have this week, it's, it's an amazing, uh, th thrilling thing, actually. I just want to kind of end our time together by, with sharing with you um, just kind of how this has happened for me in my life. and Because it happens over and over and over again. There's so many examples I could give you. But... Um, let me just share the one that was most um, critical for me, where God wanted me to go all in. I actually, I actually received Christ. I kind of gave my life to him when I was 11 years old. And um, so when you're 11, you don't know anything uh, that much. I mean, I, I didn't really understand. I didn't have anybody help me to know what that meant. But I did. I put my faith in Christ, and, and I really loved God ever from that moment. Um, but then I didn't live like it at all. I didn't follow him. I mean, it was one of those deals where seriously, like, like I, you know, to, to give him my life literally felt like this. But here's what it is. Life is not, it's not a one-time deal. You don't, like, give your life to Christ and go, there, it's good, I'm all in. See, then what happens is the next hand gets dealt, and you got to play again. And then he goes, now you're going to go all in again. See, it just, it never, and then you got to make a decision, and then you come back. And see, after a while, I started doing this stuff, you know. I just started saying, you know, God, you can have this part, but my relationship with my girlfriend, man, you can't have that. You know, in my, in my partying and all that kind of stuff, yeah, that's, you know, you can't have that. But I'll go to church on Sunday. You know, I'll do that. So when I was 19, uh, God really called me back and just, he said, he, he called me to go all in again. And, uh, and I did. And I, I left everything that mattered to me, all my friends, my family, the school I was going to in Michigan, and I transferred to another little school in, in Kentucky. See, then I thought, man, I'm all in, and I was. Again, I went all in with God. And then the game kept going on because it's a life. Life never ends. And then there was this time in my life, and this is a story I want to share with you, where um, I, once you kind of taste God and you see how fun it is to really walk with him, I remember just thinking, God, I want to do great things for you. And I, and I was actually kind of in a complaining mode. Have anybody ever complained with God? Okay. You just kind of like, God, how, and my complaint was, God, how come you're not doing anything with my life? I gave you my life. I want to follow you. And I just don't feel like you're doing anything with my life. And uh, I was at a Christian college, and this uh, missionary came and spoke. And he was actually in the depths of the jungles of Columbia, okay? I don't know if you know much about Columbia, but it can be a scary little place. And back in the 80s, it was communist infested. You guys remember the 80s? Okay, I was like, communist, you know. And uh, so this guy talked about being in the depths of these jungles, and all of a sudden, uh, this, this native came running back to him, and he said, they're coming, they're coming. And he said he knew what they meant, so he grabbed his wife and his two little kids, and they just started booking through the jungles. And sure enough, they heard these motors coming down on this boat, and they hid behind these bushes. This is they were hiding behind these bushes, and two flatbed boats were coming down the, the river, 
with uh, communist soldiers with semi-automatic weapons for the sole purpose to take them. And, and he, has, he said, as he was hiding behind this bush, he said, the greatest peace came on me. And I'm like, you're weird. <laughs> and because uh, he said, he goes, he knew in that moment whether he lived or whether he died. His life was totally in the hands of God. So he told us our story, his story, and I'm like, oh, that was a cool story. You know, and, and, and I got done, and he left, and I walked out that night, and I took a long walk on this golf course. And I was doing the same thing. I'm like, God, see, he's that guy. You don't do this. Why aren't you doing anything with my life? Now, I, I'm sharing with you, like, my most profound moment. These don't happen. Like, I can count them on one hand, okay? But I'm going to share this one because it was the most important one for me. All of a sudden, the presence of God was so thick to me that I felt like both my feet weighed about 500 tons. <laughs> I couldn't move them. And I had a dialogue with God. I don't hear him. And, I, and I, if some of you, yeah, this may sound kind of weird to you, but I'm going to tell you, God is real and he's alive. This isn't a theory. It's not something to s just study about. It's not something to get. He's real and alive and wants a relationship with you. And you're a spiritual human being. And he will speak to your spirit. And inside my heart, I had this dialogue go on with God. And he said, I felt like he said to me, David, you want to do great things for me? And I said, God, you know I do. And then he said, would you go to Columbia for me? Would, would you go to the depths of a jungle in a communist-infested country for me? All by yourself. He threw that one in. <laughs> And I just sat there and I said, and I knew. Because, you know, like when you're with God, you can't go, oh, sure, God, I'll go. You know, <laughs> you can't fool him. And I just had to be honest with him. And I remember just saying to him, it's like, you know, no, God, I wouldn't go. And this was awesome. He said, you know what, Dave? See, you want to do great things for me that I don't have yet. You want to do great things for me that I don't have yet. You guys, I, I think what I'd done, this is, I, I think I'd gone. And I was still holding on to stuff. And then I sat there and I thought, I just, I had this dialogue go on just myself. And I just said, you know what? What if when God was thinking of me, was it because he knew that there was this tribe in this depths of this jungle that he loved, and he wanted to know him. But they didn't have any access to the scriptures. That's what was true for this guy. Could it have been that God was going, you know, I love these people so much. How am I going to reach them? You know what? I'm going to create David Michael Nelson. I'm going to have him grow up in Lapeer, Michigan. He's going to be the son of Ken and Joanne Nelson. He's going to end up going to Trinity United Methodist Church because there they're going to tell him about me. And I'm going to draw him to myself. Because I want him to go into that jungle. And I'll never forget you guys. I was sitting there and I just thought, oh my gosh. If this is why I'm here. If this is why God created me. Is because he knew that he wanted me to go into that place. Then how can I say no? If that's my reason and my purpose for existence. And I remember saying to God in that moment. I'll go. I'll go. And I want to tell you guys, man. As a 20 year old. During the 80s. For me to go all by myself into the depths of the jungles of Columbia, <laughs> I knew then if I would do that, I would do anything. Anything. I can say on that day, it's just the truth, on that day, I shoved them all. They all went in. And I want to tell you guys, um, this is what God is asking you on Christmas. This Christmas, I believe he's saying to you, hey, listen, I'm all in. And you can know that I love you. Because I didn't wait for you to clean up yourself and get all pretty for me. I didn't wait for you to be good enough for me. I loved you when you could care less about me. You guys got that? So you can know that I just am love. I'm always in. That's just who I am, is I'm all in. See, that's the most guaranteed thing that I can tell you today, is that God's love for you is absolutely sure and secure. And now he's saying to you, and he said to me, I think he wants to say, hey, so would you go all in with me? 
Would you let me in to your life? Would you receive me? You guys, what happens? Why would in the world we do that? Because I think, um, I think the world, I really do. I think the world is looking and needing people who are doing exactly what God wants them to do. Because God loves every person in this world. He loves every person you know. And he wants to do it through you and through me. And when you go all in, you know what happens? All of a sudden, you start to find your life. You start to find the reason that you are here. You become who you were originally intended to be. You go on a journey of seeing your personality. See, that's one of the things I was so scared to go all in. And I've shared this here many times. But I just thought, anybody else think Christians are weird? Anybody else? I, I mean, I just thought, man, if I go all in, I'm going to have to be weird. I, I, I just I, I thought I'd have, I would be totally different. And you're all, dude, you are weird. So, uh, but I, I, just, I just remember feeling like my, I'm going to have to lose who I am. And you guys don't buy that lie. You don't lose who you are. You find who you are. He just took this personality that he created and he starts to make it what it was meant to be. A Dave Nelson who's thinking about other people instead of himself. A Dave Nelson who has a little bit more security instead of being so insecurity and so fearful of rejection and so feeling like nobody likes me. Instead feeling like, no, you're loved and you're valuable. And now all of a sudden the personality that I am can become who I was supposed to be. And he starts to create his heart within you. A human being who actually wakes up in the morning and thinks about other people instead of yourself. See, this is what God wants to do with you. And then he wants to change the world. And I am absolutely sold that the people who change the world are the ones who go all in. Do you guys agree with that? It's not the people who kind of just play the game half-heartedly. Those, that, that, that doesn't happen. And the same thing is true with God. God is looking right now. In fact, it says his eyes are roaming the earth. And I think they're here this, mo- this evening or afternoon or whatever we're meeting. I think God's eyes are roaming the earth. It says looking for those whose hearts are completely his. Whose hearts are going, I'm all in. So that he can strengthen them with his power. And here's what's wild, you guys. Is if you, like again, let me just. The athlete who decided that high school football wasn't good enough? See, high school football was good enough for me. The one who said, that's not good enough, and they went to college, and then the college guy who went to pro, do you guys know how much they sacrifice for that? And then how much we enjoy it? Yes, I do. (laughs) Even as a Lions fan, I still enjoy it. (laughs) Professional musicians, you know, I took piano lessons. Dun, 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 dun. You know, I can play the piano, right? I can sing. I remember going to see Sting. Anybody else go see Sting? He was here a few years ago. It was unbelievable, man. He walked into the place. He glided across the floor. The essence of coolness just took over the whole. Display. I was just unbelievable to me. The guy, I read an article on him in the, in the, in the Delta uh, airline. I think it was Delta. The dude gives his life to this thing. He is all in. And that way, when he comes and entertains us, we go, that's awesome spiritually spiritually you and i have a chance to change the world and benefit the world now i'm going to read you a verse ephesians 3 20 and 21 says this now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power which is at work within you To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout when? All generations. To him who is able to do more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power at work within you, to him be glory and power through all generations. That means right now, December 24th in 2010, there's a chance that when I go all in, God can take my life and do more with it than I could ever ask or imagine. Okay, I'm going to share, I'm going to be really vulnerable with you just for a second. Um, Christian and I were working on this message, and then uh, yesterday we were praying as a staff. And uh, as we were praying, I just, I, uh, this, this thought hit me. When I was 20 years old, and I'd put all my chips in, 
I didn't know it then, obviously. I was a social studies major. I was majoring in education. I wanted to coach high school. I wanted to coach football and teach high school. So I wanted to help students. I knew that. You know what God knew? He knew that someday there was going to be a K to the church in Salt Lake City, Utah. And what hit me yesterday was if I hadn't pushed my chips in, this is it's, it's weird, it's kind of embarrassing, but if I hadn't pushed my chips in, we wouldn't be sitting here today. Now, would God do something else in Salt Lake City? Yep. He'd find somebody else who would push the chips in. But the fact that I have got to go on a ride with him where he has done so much more than all I could ask or imagine, he does it with the heart that goes, you're all in, God? I'm all in. And you know what's cool? I got hopefully 40 more years, 40 more stinking years to push my chips in and go all in with God. And who knows what he has for me. And all I can think about, and I have actually wept two or three times as I've thought about you. Who knows what God has planned for you, and you'll never find out unless you say, I believe that God is all in, and I'm going all in too. So grab your chip, because you all got one when you came in here. If you don't have one, that's okay. But if you have your chip, I'd like for you to grab it. Seriously, I want you to put it in your hand and just hold this thing. And we're going to listen to a, a song here. Because this chip, what we want it to represent for you right now, just a little bit, is we'd love for it to represent to you just your life. Because he goes, all of us, basically what God has said was, uh, we believe that he's created you. And we believe literally, he goes, I've given you your life. Now my question is, what are you going to do with it? I've given you my life. Are you going to give me yours in return so I can actually do with it what I created it for? That's what I want to do. I believe with all of my heart that every one of you, Jesus wants to say to you today, your life matters to me. And you have no idea what I could do with it if you just give it to me. It doesn't matter who you are. God doesn't need great people. God needs faithful people. Just people who will say yes to him. So hold this chip and, and listen to these words. Mike's going to sing this song. It's called Always. Let me just read for you a few of the words. Listen to this. This is the start. Today could be the start. This is the start. This is your heart. This is the day you were born. This is the sun. And these are your lungs. This is the day you were born. And I am always, 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 yours see christ was born into the world you guys and because he went all in the world has never been the same and if he gets to be as the scripture says if he gets to be born again into you if you'll say come on in you will never be the same this is your heart you have been born this could be the start to say, God, always, always, always. And some of you have done that before, and you've kind of taken the chips back. Listen to this verse. Hallelujah, I'm caving in. Hallelujah, I'm in love again. Hallelujah, I'm a wretched man. Hallelujah, every breath is a second chance. On this day, no matter how you've been living, you can push all your chips in. We have two gifts up here. The greatest gift you can give to the world is for your life to be all in with God. The greatest gift you can give is your life all in with God. And I don't want everybody to get up and just throw your chip in the box. Don't do that. Just, but we wanted to give you an opportunity if you sense God saying to you this Christmas, let me change your life. Then as Mike sings, grab your chip, and you can come down.
and throw it in this box as a declaration to say, God, I got one chip to play, I got one life to live, and it's yours. Let's do it together.